All right, everybody. I don't know why I'm so nervous to make this video. Because uh, I actually have to do stuff. I can't just wing this. I actually have to do stuff. So, sorry. Okay, so it is the night of the great, the great album reveal where uh, five lucky people will get uh, five free copies. Well, they'll each get one copy of the, the Harley Poe album, you puke, along, you puke along with all the stickers and a button. That wasn't very articulate, but you get the idea. So um, I am all out of internet um, where I am. <laughs> and because uh, I'm all out of data. And so what I've done is I have written every a uh, person who entered into the contest on this list. <laughs> I have about 97, 98 people. I'm going to show you right now each each page. It's all backwards. I forgot. So, but you can still have fun finding your name. Like, look at it in the mirror. <laughs> I basically just wrote down everyone, even the very first person who, uh, who didn't have a name, but he still entered. And I still wrote you down, man, as a dot. So you're still included. So these are all the people. And I just wanted to be able to show you that. Okay. So now I have to cut. <laughs> I have to cut all these up. Um, and then we're going to put them in this bowl. And then... We are going to draw them, and that's going to be it. And in the meantime, I thought I would talk a little bit about um, what it was like to work on the album. As long as you don't mind that I'm looking down somewhat. I'll try to, like, keep this up so you can see kind of that I'm doing something. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, it, oh, gosh, it was back in, I don't know, March, April. I don't remember. Something like that. Um, when, uh, Joe approached me about adding some vocals to the album and every time we've recorded, it's been a little bit different, um, which has been fine. And this time we, uh, he did a lot, of, all the recording, most of the recording on his own or just outside of, like he had a different version. He had a bigger version of my task game that I did my songs on and it was just a little eight track recorder and, um, Anyway, and uh, so he basically left that here with me, and uh, we listened to all the songs together, and they were basically, all, I think everyone had recorded at that time but me, and maybe some, uh, I know Matt Clark, the guy who mixed it and mastered it, um, put drums, put like his snare and brushes, I think, on some of the songs, um, and that wasn't on there yet, but everyone else was on there, which is, I don't know, what is that, backups? uh, bass and, uh, Joe, and then Joe had his backups, and, um, and I, guys, I listened to it, and I was, like, I was really intimidated, Joe didn't realize that at first, <laughs> until after it was all done, um, I, and, uh, I think he knew that something was up with me, but he didn't, I didn't think he knew that, I just felt intimidated, uh, uh, because I thought it was so good. Like, I was like, this doesn't need me. Like, I didn't realize I was going to be, like, the last person. Um, and so I really felt like all the other times it wasn't like that. Either everyone kind of recorded parts kind of, like, going, like, throughout, you know, the time. Or, like, all different time periods, but everyone's recording. and Or it was, I was just one of the first people to get in there. Or, but anyway, um, the pressure was put all on myself by myself, which is what I do. <laughs> and so, um, but anyway, so he left it with me for five and a half weeks, six weeks, something like that. And, um, the, that first night he dropped it off, we listened to the songs and he kind of talked about like kind of vaguely what he, uh, was hearing and things. And, um, uh, he didn't have too many instructions for me on this one. Sometimes he gives me instructions. Uh, like, sometimes he'll have, like, a like a, a, a specific kind of melody line uh, in a certain uh, part of the song that he wants to make sure is included. And so he might give that to me and stuff. But, um, gosh, on this one, I don't recall that there was anything like that. 
I know I just felt we were keeping it simpler this time around than like we were on uh, the last one. Uh, gosh, and, and and Joe, if I if I'm incorrect, if there is a line, I'm really trying to think that he gave me to put in there. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember what. But he could have. I don't. I. But I don't think that there was. Now, on some of the songs, um, on towards the end, I started to just like freak out because I thought it was taking too long and and get a drained and. Um, <laughs> And he came in, and I asked him to just come in and help me with the, the last couple songs. Uh, uh, like, Charlie Can, I think, was one where he we both just sat there, and we were, he was like, okay, let's do, we're going to do something like this. And then we would push record, and we'd both just go for it. And um, instead of me just writing on my own and writing, uh, like, thinking of parts on my own. So that I know that happened to, like, Charlie Can and... Um, there were a few things on some other songs like uh, that he was like, hey, make sure I want you to go in and I want you to sing that part and just hold it out with us. I'm like, okay. So I would write that down and later I would go in and put my voice there and stuff like that. Um, it's just, you know, you, I think it's all blended, you know, <laughs> who's writing what, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, um, uh, and so, but anyway, so he'd give me kind of an idea of what he wanted for, they're kind of envisioned, but really he's so generous uh, and and really gives me a lot of freedom uh, to to play and make up stuff and, and, and do what I want and try things. Um, and that's and hopefully that's just how I think in the beginning, like on the first album or something, I, I, I remember I thought remember maybe I was specific like, hey, I'll just put down stuff and you just delete whatever you don't want or you can change and tell me to change stuff. You know, uh, if if it's something I put down is like almost what, you know, you're like, oh, you should do this instead, you know. And so, um, but other than that, like he really just kind of gives me the material and lets me play and have fun and um, on my own, which is really cool. And uh, um, so, yeah, anyway, I hope I hope I'm not stepping on anyone's toes. <laughs> I, um but, uh, anyway, he, uh, so I was writing, and I'm writing, and, okay, so the first one, the first song, um, I was surprised, because I, w I was surprised at how easy the album flowed, how, how easy this one flowed out. Um, usually there's a song, uh, or two that takes a lot of work, and, um, even though there, there were some that were easier to lay down than others on this one, um, it just really all flowed out real. I was so shocked how easily it would flow out. I would just push record and just go for it and do something and, and, um, things would just happen. And it was, it was, I was so relieved because like I said, I felt like that it could have been a great album still without me on it. And, um, uh, and I was like, man, I have a lot to like live up to <laughs> like you know I have to make sure I don't make this worse <laughs> you know I have to make sure that what I add like elevates this helps to elevate it you know and isn't dragging it down everything else on it was so great and it sounded so good and I think that about all a lot of Joe stuff though I like but I like I always like that in artists I like um a raw I always like the like raw acoustic uh album that the artists all the artists put puts out I just like that um, a raw sound or whatever and um and I'm getting better but uh, I'm also just real like still real it's not as hard for me anymore but it used to be really hard for me to listen to myself sing uh and talk and whatever <laughs> Like listening to it back, and I would just get so tired of my own voice, and I would start to critique it, and be, and then you know, get all like frustrated and down on yourself, and be like I suck. But um, anyway, what was I talking about? So this one kind of flowed out really, really easily. The first song was really fun. I just um, I I kind of like had like a, a Fraggle Rock vibe in my head. I don't know if anyone remembers that old puppet show. It was on TV. Um, in the 80s, I think, maybe in the 90s too, uh, but um, I really just wanted to be a puppet. I just pretended like I was some monster puppet, <laughs> some underground, <laughs> in a cave monster puppet, like 
just like singing, you know, with all of our other little like heads, puppet heads bopping out of the walls and stuff like that. <laughs> in this like dark swampy place. Maybe not, this one was more dry. Not as wet as like, um, it's like what you might envision for like, uh, is it Swamp Girl? I think that was on a different album, but anyway. So, okay, gosh. All right, so that was that one. Um, what's another one that I, Olivia, okay, Olivia, literally, I laid Olivia down in like 15 minutes. Like I didn't need, like a lot of Olivia is just my first go, my first run through. And uh, like, oh, okay, let me just do this real quick. That's how I felt with Olivia. I'm pretty sure Joe just sat on the couch and just watched me do it for like 20 minutes. And I was like, okay, all done. <laughs> I, I might, that might be, I realized with time, I tend to, um, when I describe things in terms of time, I, my feelings about how things went tends to color my perception of the time. So maybe it was like 40 minutes. I, I don't know if I'm if I'm gonna admit that to myself and try to be real and Joe could probably <laughs> could probably verify what the real time was but it felt like I just did it really quickly uh, but that's the advantage of already knowing the song I had already like played Olivia for three tours and I just knew the song so well and so when I heard a different version of it I was just able to go with it you know and um, uh, because when you know when you know the song and you know, kind of hear like the new color he's presenting it as, you can just go with it, you know, and, um, anyway, I don't know if <laughs> anyone understands what I'm saying, but I would, that one was really fun and really easy for me to lay down, and it all just came out, like, immediately, and, um, I think maybe the second girl, yeah, she came out right after I laid down the first girl, so, and by girls, I mean, like, the background vocals, but anyway, so um, that one was really fun. Uh, um, Shithead was really challenging because um, there were so many other, there were other background vocals on there already. And usually when I uh, have written for Joe, there aren't any background vocals on there yet, or they're very minimal. And, um, uh, but there were already a bunch of background vocals on there. And so when I went to, figure out my part, I, I basically had to, at, at some point I had, I was just going through each note of like that chorus or whatever and figuring out what the missing note was, like going through each beat of that, you know, where, where everyone changes, changes notes and figuring out what the missing note was and then having to make that into a line. And so, um, I feel like on shithead, um, I think that's the one. I think it, it's shithead where it's like my my part kind of goes up and down in different places, or it just stays at top and then it'll switch real quick and stuff. Basically, just because I'm just like filling in whatever's left, <laughs> like all the other notes in the chord were were taken, <laughs> so I had to just fill in whatever's left. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, I just remember for a lot of them, I just had to make up a lot of different cool vocal lines. For like the end, like there would be little, there would be build parts or like the ending part. So I just have to like jump in and like make up cool vocal lines and, um, uh, which, which was fun, but the most challenging, that was the most challenging thing. I uh, just cause I had to do it. It took multiple takes, like multiple, multiple takes just because some of them were so hard to sing and to execute. Um, if you listen to albums, surely you know what I'm talking about. At the end, there's a lot of parts at the end where we'll all just, like, be doing something. And then we're not saying words. And then there's just vocal lines happening, you know. And, um, and instruments happening. And da-da! And, um, and so I would, uh, sometimes those were really hard to sing. Like, one of them is, oh, oh, or something like that. And it goes, like, up and down. And then slides. And it sounds really awesome. But I had to figure out how to sing it because I'm not a professional singer <laughs> and um uh well whatever you know I'm not I I do not train my voice and I need to I really need to especially since on tours and stuff um it's basically it's just a race to see how many shows you can get in before you lose your voice <laughs> and um so really I need to there's a mosquito hey man this mosquito, you, oh, he's flapping his legs at me. Are you challenging me? He's on top of my phone. Mosquito. Just 
just leave me alone. All right. But anyway, um, so sometimes I would have to go through and just figure out how to sing those and how to make them sound somewhat decent. Um, uh, and uh, a lot of those I made up on the fly. Uh, and then, like I said, just kind of perfected how to get, how to make it sound okay on my voice because um, like belting or whatever they call that is not, uh, I don't think that's n not my voice's forte, <laughs> to, to be funny, <laughs> forte, which means loud. Um, but, uh, and so, and I just don't train my voice that way and I need to, and uh, to make it stronger that way. And so, um, it's harder for me to sing those parts. And so, uh, anyway, let's see, let's move on. Let's move on, shall we? Um, Escape is one of my favorite songs on the album. Escape, uh, I love, I have it on my playlist in Spotify, and I just, like, I just listen to it as a song. <laughs> I just, I love that song. I love how gritty it feels. I love, I, I still love it now, just as much as the moment when I, when I came up with it on the second verse where I come in and I'm like, um, da -na -na, da -na -na, da -na -na, and I'm like real low or whatever. I just love that part. I was like, yes, this is so fun. I tried to, on this album, make sure that I wrote parts that were easier for my voice to sing because on, uh, first of all, so that if we, if I ever had to perform them, it would be easier to perform, uh, because, um, with like, have a great life, I didn't put any limits on anything. And you could probably tell, <laughs> like with the clarinets and all the vocals and stuff like that. Like, I, it didn't matter. Like, all it mattered is if I could hit it for that run or if I could lay it down. It didn't matter if I could replicate it easily and if it was easy enough for my voice to replicate over and over again on tour. <laughs> and so um, I, it was just like for the music's sake, just trying to figure out what was cool and stuff. And, um, but on this one, I tried to be more practical, uh, with what, so that they could be more easily performable if need be. And, um, and also that kind of, I think makes it easier to sing along to, uh, and, you know, I'm not trying to write some like big operatic orchestra, you know, it makes it easier to, for just as a normal person to sing along to. <laughs> and which is still also, also very cool. It's a cool part of musical art. And um, so uh, I tried to th keep that in mind with this one. I wanted it to be a lot more raw and just a lot more uh, punk, um, which is, I don't know. I was almost going to say, which is hard for me. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I, I'm a punk. I'm just a unique kind of punk. I have a lot of punk in me, if you know me, per if you know me personally. Uh, but... Um, Anyway, geez, this is going to be such a long video, and I'm still cutting up these names. I'm still cutting up these names. All right. Going to keep going. Going to keep going. All right, so what's next? Uh, I know I'm skipping stuff, but um, Lewis was fun. Um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, when I did... The two churchy sounding ones, so What's a Devil to Do, and um, uh, I can, I'm Going to Hell. Um, those two, I, I envisioned, like I was just like in this, I, um, I, told, I would commented on, someone commented on one of the videos and I replied like, they were saying how it has such an angelic sound for... <laughs> for its content, for what it's talking about. And I was like, that's exactly what I was going for. You know, it's exactly what, that's like where that energy came from was I was picturing like, like sad souls or like um, forgotten angels or fallen angels or just angels, uh, sad angels, you know, or um, um, spirits and whatever, like in this old dark um, stone church, just old and with high ceilings and, um, and I just pictured um, all of these, like, songs and spirits, like, coming out of the eaves and from behind the pulpit and just lamenting and singing those songs. And I really just wanted to, um, I loved making it beautiful. I loved uh, the idea of taking something that can be seen as, is traditionally seen as dark 
or um, as evil and um, and pulling the beauty out of it, you know, and trying to just kind of, yeah, I, I like, I like doing stuff like that. You know, I like, um, what's, I can't think of the word when two things are opposing, bringing them together. What is that called? Uh, it's not dichotomy. It's like the, um, anyway, I can't think of it, but, um, I just, and it's just something that I, uh, I guess it's the way that I see life too. I, I think beauty is, um, I think it's all about, I think perspective is the strongest tool we have. And, um, I think just everything is about perspective. And if you can master being able to change your perspective or alter your perspective or look from other people's perspective temporarily, all these things, um, I just think it can solve and answer so many things. I just try to challenge like the idea of what is beauty and what is holy and that kind of thing. Um, since I, I don't know, I feel like <laughs> I'm going to get all, I'm going to get all religious. I just wanted to challenge those things and kind of, and uh, I loved bringing beauty into, into that and finding and trying to make, yeah, trying to find the beauty in that, and that was, and those flowed so easily, so easily. Uh, I, I'm going to hell was one of the last songs I did, um, and um, that I attacked when I was writing, and uh, I kind of made myself because I don't know, I was so excited yet intimidated, and um, I had just heard it from the beginning. As soon as I, as soon as Joe showed it to me for the first time, I heard. Um, all that I heard what the the voices and um and what he was going for and uh, I just thought it was such a beautiful song and um <laughs> when I first I guys all right so he's a perfectionist for you when I first showed Joey what I had for that song um it wasn't mixed the same. But all the most of the vocals were there, but we did have to relay them down. I was still trying to lay them down. They were hard. They were so hard. Even the first part, still the 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 low female voice on the first aria part, you know, the, where they're all singing, it did still not get executed the way I wanted to because I couldn't because I couldn't keep, I couldn't hold my breath that long. And um, uh, I think that line is actually executed correctly at the end during when it's all oud. But but that line didn't get executed the same uh, at the beginning because I just couldn't I couldn't sing it <laughs> I mean, I'd hold my breath too long and I'd t I'd take breaths and it was <sighs> but anyway I I just it was good enough and um, I just imagined this huge choir singing it and uh, um, but the first time I showed it to Joe I just I showed it to him and then I just started crying because I didn't think it was good enough. <laughs> And he was like, what is happening? And I was like, I'm sorry, it's just not, I don't think it's good enough. And, it's just, and like, we listened to it and he was like, Jamie, this is really awesome. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I just, um, I just, I felt so much pressure with this one for some reason, more than I did the other ones. I don't know why. Uh, I, I don't really know why. I don't think I. it was because of any kind of like, having to prove myself to anyone but like I just the music you know I get I just really felt like it was such a good album I just felt it was so good and I felt like everyone was waiting on me and I felt that pressure maybe and um <clears throat> and I knew I don't know there's always that pressure to get it out soon I mean it always seems to take so long and I just wanted it to be I just wanted it to be wanted it to be worth it and um Anyway, the very last song I did was um, the last one, which was, uh, you know, the long one. The always, I could always eat your brain. Yeah. And um, again, at the very end on that one, I was basically just like trying out to be like in a, to be a puppeteer. <laughs> I just imagined myself as some puppet, like, like, is that weird? You know? Like some monster puppet or some, you know, something like that singing or whatever. And I was just this character and I was just trying to make it fun and, um, fun and, and 
weird and almost childish, I guess. I don't know. <clears throat> but that one flowed really easy, too. I was shocked at how easily that, that, that one came out, all the backup stuff for that one. Guys, I'm almost done, and we're almost done with the album. Uh, so, yeah, I hope that... Uh, that y'all liked, I hope y'all liked what I put on the album, uh, I, you know, if you're not a fan of, like, you know, Harley Poe with, with Chill Baby 5000 vocals, you know, I totally get it, I totally get it, it's totally cool, um, I just, I'm always, I never expect anything, I never expect that I'm going to be put on the next anything and I'm always grateful and excited when Joe asks you know um and uh because it is cool you know it is <laughs> it is an honor <laughs> it's just I really like uh I really like writing to Harley Poe for some reason you know uh, I think I like that Joe writes like complicated fun stuff and um I think our our styles can be really complementary to each other and guys, look at this. I'm all done cutting and I'm just wrinkling up the names. I'm wrinkling up the names right now. <laughs> wrinkling up the names right now. Wrinkling up the names right now. Guys, I helped make this bowl. Um, I went to a glass blowing class. I paid for it. It was like three hours or something. Um, and the guy, there was a guy there and it was just me and, uh, and he like, he obviously helped a lot. <laughs> and basically I was just there like pretending like I was assisting, you know, like, okay. And he let me like do something real quick or whatever. But we worked with like, it wasn't like a small flame or anything. I mean, it was like with the giant furnace and these giant poles. Like it was, it was that, that real not real shit. It was so, you know, which I didn't realize. I didn't, I just didn't know what to expect. I just it was offered. So I went and, um, uh, cause I find that stuff interesting. And, um, and I was hoping to blow glass one day, but I was just going to do it like, <laughs> like a, a much, on a much smaller scale, but it was still really cool to see it, uh, on that huge ass scale. So, so many names, so many names to go crumbling, crumbling them. Oh, so many names, so many names to go. Oh, you guys. Oh, it's almost September. Almost September. I'm almost done. You guys can make it with me this far in the video. You guys deserve a medal. All right. All right, guys. Here you Gosh, that looks like nothing. Look how little that looks. It does not look like much. That took a long time. It took a really long time. All right. Let's see here. Here we go. First name. I don't know how to do this. I was looking. I can't look. I can't look. All right. First name is. I'm so nervous. Oh, Jessica Puertas. Puertas. Where's the thing? Jessica. P U E R T A S. Puer puertas, puertas. I can't roll my R's, and I'm just butchering this beautiful name. So there's number one. Congratulations! All right, next one. Lucid KXB. So funny because I just I have no idea who these people are. I I need to go back and even look at like your comments and see which one you were. Next one. Mixing him up, mixing him up. Cinema. Harley Matthews, you're the next winner. This is so fun. Okay. Here we go. And number four. I knew. 
when I wrote this one, I knew I was going to have to say this one. Okay, are you ready? R W Q F S F A S X C. If that is you, congratulations. All right, we have one more, you guys. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I want it to be someone good. All right, ready? Ugh. This is the one. This is the one right here. Cryptid Central. Cryptid Central. All right, guys, I'm going to say those one more time. Jessica Puertas. Puertas. I apologize. <laughs> uh, Harley Matthews. Lucid KXB, Cryptid Central, and then RWQFSFASXC. Those are the winners. All right, guys, I won't waste your time anymore. Um, I'm not real sure how to do this. So I am going to ask you guys, uh, if you're one of these five people, um, if you feel comfortable leaving... Comment on your comment. No, that's not fair. Comment. <laughs> comment on your comment, your email address. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, then uh, uh, comment on your comment what you want to do. <laughs> How you want me to get this to you. Okay, uh, if you if you want me to give you an email address and you can contact me that way uh, and then give me your address. But if you just want to give me your email address straight up, I'll go to these five people's comments um, and then I'll contact you through your email and um, and then you can give me an address, send uh, the stuff to you and I'll send it out. All right, guys, sorry this is so long. I hope uh, it's somewhat enjoyable and congratulations to you guys and bye.